Uh, hello, it's Mr. Burns again. Uh, here we go with uh, tax, borrow, and spend, which is uh, going to be how the government uh, ta taxes, borrows, and spends money to impact economic activity in our mixed economy. You should have this handout in front of you, the tax, borrow, spend handout. Uh, you can see that there's four bullets at the top and then five boxes below uh, that we're going to fill in. And again, it shouldn't be too long of a video. So here we go on our PowerPoint. Uh, we're at the top, the government taxes, borrows, and spends to influence economic activity. That's kind of our main idea statement there. Uh, continuing down are three major types of taxes here. So we're gonna, have, we're gonna talk about income sales and property tax, and they're each gonna have an impact at different level of government. So when you think of your nine box chart, your federal, state, and local levels um, of government, each one of these is gonna have an impact at a different level. All right, so first is our income tax. Individuals, based on the income or the money that they make, that they, that they bring in, have to pay a tax. Corporations as well, because remember, corporations are a type of business that, uh, while they're, it's a bunch of people owning them, they act as uh, an individual on, uh, in terms of their, their income. So they're going to make money, and then, of course, people are going to get payouts in terms of how many shares they own, but then, you know, you got to pay taxes on that income because it counts it's money that you're making it's money you're bringing in uh, it's the main source of revenue for the federal government we're going to talk about the 16th amendment very soon and then of course some state governments not every state government has a state income tax uh, I think I mentioned that before I used a, an example of a, a hockey player that was you know the Sabres wanted Buffalo Sabres wanted to sign him but he went to Dallas because Dallas part of the reason better weather of course uh, and also they don't have a state income tax so that has an impact on, on many different areas of the world, including sports. All right, let's go to sales tax. You guys pay sales tax. It's the one tax you pay right now. If you go to the store and buy something or go to a, a restaurant, right, you pay a tax. And it's it's basically a tax on, on items you purchase. It could be um, clothing. It could be um, building supplies, et cetera. And it's a percentage of the sale price. Every state has a different uh, sales tax. Um, sometimes they're higher and then they don't have a state income tax like in Florida or in I think Tennessee is the highest state income ta uh, sales tax. All right. It's a key source of revenue for state and local governments because they kind of split the money there at the state between the state and local governments. All right. And then we have our third tax is a property tax which is on land and buildings and in some areas of the of the country, Virginia being one of them, uh, personal property tax. You own a car, you have to pay a tax on it every year. The more valuable, the more tax you pay. And this is going to be our key source of revenue for local governments. Property taxes, local governments, uh, regulating land use is one of the um, powers of local government that's given to it by the Virginia Constitution. All right. Uh, so how does the government tax borrow and spend to influence economic activity? So in space number one, I want you to write government tax. And then going down within that box, there's going to be a couple of bullets. So if the government, think about it, if the government raises or increases taxes, right, that means there's going to be less money available for businesses and individuals to spend. Because now instead of being able to spend more, now you're paying more in taxes. Which could be good because you could be getting more public goods and services that you don't have to pay for individually as much now because it's going through your taxes. Right? And if the government decreases taxes, it increases the money or the funds available for individual and business spending. So those kind of go hand in hand. All right, number two, government borrowing. If the government's going to borrow money from the Federal Reserve, from its bank, which we'll talk about uh, in, this, in this lesson, the more the government borrows, the less or reduces the amount of money that's available for individuals and businesses to borrow. That should make sense. If it's, it's like a scale. If the government's borrowing more, then there's less for individuals and vice versa. Right? Okay. If government borrows less, that's more that's available for individuals and businesses. It increases the money available for, for them to borrow. All right. Going down, government spending, number three. This is the one that might be a little bit confusing to you, but if the government spends more money, they, they borrow and then they use that money, what that's going to do is it's going to increase demand because now 
Uh, there's going to be a potential for more production and employment from the government. So more people are going to uh, need or use those products that the government is making those goods and services. Okay? Government wouldn't increase spending if there wasn't some benefit, right? So it, if the government's going to increase spending, it's going to have to do something positive for our economy. So what it's going to do is it's going to increase these ideas of demand, employment, and production. And it might speed up the economy a little bit. If our economy is dragging, the government sometimes gets involved. Now, if government is um, decreasing its spending, maybe doing that through, you know, just paying back loans or borrowing less money, it's going to reduce demand from the government, and it might slow down the economy. We also, we don't want our economy growing and having peaks and valleys, right? We want our economy growing at a nice, slow, and steady pace. So... If that's the case, they might decrease spending to slow it down a little bit. That doesn't mean slow it down and, and turn it back. It just means instead of going up really really at a high, steep pace, it's going up more of a low, slow, steady pace. All right, number four, government spending and taxes. This one's going to make perfect sense to you. Increased government spending may result in higher taxes. Well, someone's got to pay for it, right? Okay. And decreased government spending may result in lower taxes. Uh, and then number five is going to be our last box, 16th Amendment. Give me number five, which is right at the bottom left of your handout. Okay, so you got the 16th Amendment. And the 16th Amendment authorizes Congress to tax our income. So how much money we bring in as individuals, um, businesses as well, corporations, right? So that's going to be both personal and business incomes. So you're going to write all that in box 16. Again, I'll go back. So Congress to tax incomes, both personal and business. All right, so you should use this handout to help fill in your study guide, which will be due in a few days. All right, thank you.